Yes, so my name is James Humphrey. I'm the Information Manager at Health Direct Australia. And I'm going to show you about our um, Australian Health Thesaurus, which I manage, and um, how um, I'm going to show you what it looks like and how we use it, um, and what are the current developments we're going to be applying it to as well. Okay, so first of all, who is Health Direct Australia? Now, we were um, established um, by a COAG in 2006. It was actually Tony Abbott when he was the health minister in the Howard government who set us, us up um, to try to release the burden on, on, um, on Medicare by providing health telehealth services. We were uh, known initially as the National Health Call Centre Network um, and we ran the after hours GP helpline service and nurse triage. And it was only about um, five or six years ago that we actually came, went into, moved into digital health services. And we took over the management of the Health Insight website. So we have a mandate to work with um, um, the federal and state jurisdictions um, to address their key priorities and challenges within the health, ageing and the social services sectors. We, um, we have a number of um, products and services the main one is our, our Health Direct website, which um, was initially known as, as Health Insight. This um, site contains a lot of our health information articles, which we produce ourselves. We have links to um, um, partner content as well. So we have 30,000 links from peak health bodies, such as um, Asthma Australia, the Heart Foundation, Beyond Blue and um, organisations such as that. So we act as a portal to their, their content. We have a symptom checker service where you can um, see how the, the severity of your symptoms. And you can also go and um, find services in your local area, such as uh, doctors, hospitals, um, emergency departments, and also specialists. And we also have um, medicines information, which I'll get onto a bit later on. Another website is the Pregnancy, Birth and Baby website for, for those who are pregnant or are having babies. That also contains health information articles and links to our partner content as well. We also manage the My Age Care website on behalf of the federal government that has our similar services on the, on the site. We have a carer gateway service as well for those people who identify as carers of others who are um, who have disabilities or are frail or are, or are aged. And another service is the National Health Services Directory, which is used for our service finder. This is where we have, it's a database of all the um, GPs, pharmacists, emergency departments, etc. Now the main reason I'm showing you those sites and products is because our, the, the thesaurus that I manage is used on all of those sites and helps to contribute to it. The, um, I don't know if you can see that slide, the, uh, the video is of the faces is covering over the, the vital statistics on here, but um, the thesaurus is a um, medical and health and human services related thesaurus and has to be human services related to cater for the aged care and the care gateway. Um, the statistics on the side is just covering up on the website on the uh, video there, but there are basically over 5,000 concepts in the thesaurus. There are 27 concept schemes um, and there are nearly 9,000 synonyms or alternative labels. Um, the concepts uh, reflect the current Australian health and human service environments. And it's, um, we use it because it's integral to our, the search and discovery of our content on our websites and services. It's used to improve the user's search experience. But the main thing about it is that it is consumer focused. Most uh, health terminologies and taxonomies are clinically related. So therefore the medical profession or for researchers, but we have a consumer focus and that causes, uh, raises a number of challenges for us. So I'll let you have a look at the thesaurus at the moment. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see our concept schemes. And you can see we have ones such as um, anatomy, there's chemicals and drugs, that's where we put our medicines information. Uh, we have diseases and disorders, we have equipment and supplies, facilities, 
Uh, if you work your way down, we have um, symptoms and techniques and things like that. So they're the main concept schemes within the thesaurus. If I select one of those schemes, and I'll, you can see on the right-hand side there, I've selected the diseases and disorders scheme. And I've worked my way through the hierarchy um, through um, digestive system diseases, down through digestive system cancers. And the one I selected on the screen there is gastrointestinal cancers. That's the one in orange. It has a number four after it, which means that there are four other concepts narrower concepts below that. Um, once you select one of the concepts, um, um, you're actually looking at the, the software that we use. We use Pool Party to manage our thesaurus. And you can see what it's showing you at the moment is the SCOS view, which is the simple knowledge organization system view, which is basically the broader, narrower and related concepts relationships. We can also um, match it to a, another concept in another um, reference set, such as one at the moment we've got there is um, a reference to um, MESH, which is the medical subject headings, which I'll, I'll tell more about that later on. On the right hand side, you can see some of the attributes and such as the preferred label and the alternative label here. And you can see we have GIT cancers as a synonym. You might also notice there's another little tab just up above there called Clinical Relationships. If I click on that, you get another screen here, which is um, basically this is our own custom schemas that we have developed ourselves, basically our own um, ontology. And the one, I've, the concept I've selected on the screen is amitriptyline, which is a, a medicine, an active ingredient. Uh, the, with the concept scheme, we've, um, the, sorry, the custom schema we've, uh, created our own um, relationships. So we can make a relationship between this active ingredient and the conditions. And also we can do it to symptoms. Um, it's used in surgical procedures and uh, also used in diagnostic procedures as well. So we can um, fill that out by making uh, those relationships. We're not really using that at the moment, but um, if you look on the right hand side, we have the attributes based on this custom schema. And this is where we've mapped it to other data in other, um, other data sets. And here you can see uh, we've got the AMT um, ID. The AMT is the Australian Medicines Terminology, which is a naming standard used for um, uh, the pharmaceutical systems in Australia. We've also got a, um, a CAS number, which is a chemical number. We have a drug bank ID as well. Um, and you'll also notice there's one there called the Beers Criteria. Now that doesn't tell you if that ingredient is used in your, your, um, your Fosters or your Two is New. What it refers to is the, um, uh, it's a list of ingredients that are inappropriate to prescribe to older people. And so we just got some Boolean logic there. Um, and we also have down there the pregnancy category. You see we have uh, pregnancy category C. And I think from memory that C, it means that there is a risk to use this medicine if you are pregnant. And I'll show you how we're using those, um, those attributes a bit later on. Now, the, um, the thesaurus was originally developed by the Department of Health and Ageing in about uh, 2000. And it was based on, on MESH, which is maintained by the US Library of Medicine. They use it to classify their big um, medical um, databases and sites such as PubMed and Medline Plus. And we took over the management of it about oh, four or so years ago. And there's a number of different criteria we use to update and maintain the thesaurus. We've actually um, made quite a few changes since we've, um, we've taken over that management of it. Um, and we use um, user an analytics to help determine what are the new terms that we need to, to add to the thesaurus. Because we're consumer focused, we can analyze what people are searching on the website to see if does, it, does this term exist in the thesaurus. If not, we should add it in as a, either a pref label or, a, or an alternative label. Uh, we also um, respond to current news developments 
For example, when the Zika virus outbreak hit Australia a couple of years ago, um, it was the first time in Australia, so therefore we didn't actually have that concept in our thesaurus. So we, um, we added it to the thesaurus. And we also do big um, environmental research analyses um, uh, for, for specific purposes. Um, when we launched our My Age Care website, we needed to go and analyse what are the, um, we put in a huge corpus of um, aged care um, content and used our software to analyse the terms that were used and therefore we can identify concepts that needed to be added to the aged care um, uh, schemes. There are also a number of elements of other classification and coding systems here, and these are mostly the, the clinical ones I was talking about before. We still need reference to them. So um, there's a reference here to ICD-10, which is an international classification of diseases. That's a World Health Organization um, uh, classification system used to, for reporting purposes. We've got the DSM-5, which is for mental disorders. An example here is that the, the concept that we know of as, um, as autism, uh, when DSM-5 was released a couple of years ago, um, the actual term now used by the profession is autism spectrum disorders. So that's another um, synonym we added to our thesaurus. Um, we've got the anatomical therapeutic chemical classification scheme, which is about body systems and the medicines that work on those body systems. Um, I've got mesh down there as, as well. And the big one is, is SNOMED, which is the, um, it's the global classification system used for health records. So um, we're actually going through a process of mapping to it at the moment, and I'll give a bit more information about that a little bit later. So how do we use the Australian Health Thesaurus? We, we mainly use it for classification purposes. We have two types of main content. It's our local content, which we develop ourselves. We write it ourselves. And we have an automatic classification process. We apply concepts to it. And we also have those uh, 30,000 partner links as well. So we harvest the links in and the metadata from the source code is, is classified against the thesaurus. What that does then is allow us to um, use the classifications in the ranking in the search results. So if you use a typed in a search, if that term is one of our thesaurus terms, then it will be um, get so a, a number one ranking in the algorithm. If that term is then in the title, it gets the second ranking. If it's an N in the in the description, it gets works further way down the down the order there. So it's quite important to to help with the relevance in the search results. It's also used for the auto-suggestion. So when a user starts typing into the search field, after a couple of letters are typed in, it'll then pull concepts from the thesaurus as suggestions for them to, to select. We can also display some more contextual items on the websites. For example, if you were on a page about asthma, and that page has been classified with the concept asthma, then we can display the symptom checker flow for asthma because it's also classified with asthma as well. So that based on that matching, we can contextually put pieces onto the website to um, provide more useful information for the, for the user. We also um, have used the thesaurus to manage our medicines data. And this has been a big piece of work and uh, what we have done with that is we've developed our own terminology service where we use the thesaurus as the, as the main control list for, for medicines. So we'll add in the active ingredients or medicinal products into the, the thesaurus. And as I showed you before, it has a reference to the BEERS criteria and also the TGA, uh, the pregnancy database. We also pull in other data from other sources, such as the Therapeutic Goods Administration, um, the Australian Medicines Terminology, and also data from the PBS. So if, if the medicine is actually li listed on the PBS. And as of a couple of weeks ago, we actually launched um, um, images of pills 
which we're pulling in from Guildlink, which is the commercial arm of the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. So within the terminology service, it's all in, in RDF format and we can just pull that data uh, onto the website based on uh, a user search. And this is an example of some of the information that's on a page that is presented to a, to a user. You can see here on the top right hand, the top left hand corner here, we've got the, the brand name amitriptyline. You can see that there's a little um, box there that says uh, active ingredient over 65 years of age. Um, if you're over 65 years of age, there may be specific risks and recommendations for use of this medicine. Please discuss with your pharmacist, doctor or health professional. Now that, that flag there is only coming from the, um, from that attribute within the, um, within uh, the thesaurus, uh, where we've got the uh, Boolean logic for true under the Beers criteria. You can also see we're pulling other information there from the TGA about the pack, the type of pack and how you can store it. There's a link there to go to the PBS. On the right hand side, you've got more information about the medicine itself, the, um, the appearance of it, its dosage form, its route of administration. And of course, right in the middle there, there's an example of some of the, um, the images that we're pulling in. But the thesaurus is being used as the main control list for this, that, 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 is the, um, that manages all the rest of the other data. I mentioned before about the um, mapping to SNOMED. Um, the Australian Medicines terminology, as of last year, has now become a subset of um, SNOMED. So we've already done that mapping already. What we want to do now is map to the other conditions, the procedures, the techniques within SNOMED. Um, that'll give us um, access to a number of other um, classification coding systems that SNOMED is already mapped to, such as LOINC, which is used for pathology. ICPC is a primary care classification system, and they've already mapped to the ICD-10, which is the diseases. Um, coding system as well. So we'll be using linked data techniques to try to, to link to other data sets so we can pull in that data to add more value to our, our web pages. But there's a, another even more important one that we're doing first. And that's, um, oh, this is an example here on the page of, um, of the mapping with SNOMED. And we're using a tool developed by the CSIRO uh, called Snapper. And you can see the, um, the first two columns here are the first columns are the uh, URI of our concepts. Then you've got one of our, our the next column is our pref label. Then you've got the SNOMED ID in the third column and the SNOMED label in the fourth column. So we're going through a mapping process. Once we're happy with those mappings, we can then add the SNOMED ID as an attribute to the um, thesaurus um, terms. Um, the main use case we're starting off with, though, is that we're going to be integrating our app with the My Health Record. And you may have um, known that the in the last budget, the government announced when the um, every Australian will have a health record and they've allocated a, a, num a certain amount of money to that as well. So we're just developing a prototype at the moment. And you can see on the left-hand screen here, we've got a, a access to the View My Health Record. Once your health record comes up, you can actually see what are the medications you've been prescribed with, what are the allergies your uh, doctor has uh, th said you have, what are your recent Medicare benefits. And we're trying to integrate as many of our services into this um, My Health Record. If on the right hand side is a list there of some of those medicines that uh, you've been prescribed with. The idea that what we're trying to do is if you, if you are not sure what that medicine is, you can click on that and it will display our own content pages, which can provide more context to a user. Um, and by doing the mapping to SNOMED and the other conditions and procedures, the idea is that if you can, uh, if you see a procedure or condition on your health record that you are not sure of what it is, we want to be able to uh, get the user to then click on that term and to expose our and display our own content pages. Um, 
Other things that we're doing is um, we're actually introducing natural language processing onto our websites now. So the thesaurus is going to be used, um, it's going to be integral to that. And also with the um, some chatbots and web chats as well. So the thesaurus will be powering those other services. So I think that's all my time that I've been allocated. I think it's um, my 15 minutes are up. So um, if you've got any other questions later that I can't answer today, um, please contact me on, on the uh, email address on the screen at the moment.